Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Serrano. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the crew, do me a quick favor. Hit both the like and the subscribe button. But if you're already a part of the crew, so... So we're going to be talking about the Qbot X50 and we're also going to be talking about the Umidigi A11 camera test. So we're going to be looking at some photo samples. I'm going to actually throw up some photo samples as well as some video samples. I'm going to put those up on the screen right now as we speak. So the first one we're going to be looking at is basically a picture that I took and it's it's a it's a portrait shot. So let me know what you guys think about this photo right here. On the left, I'm going to put up the X50 and on the right, I'm going to put up the A11. So let me know what you guys think about the portrait overall um, on the shoulder blade of the X50 on the right and left. I can see it's a little bit blurry, but even on the top left hand corner. Um, so it kind of it, it did a really good job either way. There is really good detail on the right. You can see that her hair is a little bit blurry on the bottom on the A11, but they both did a really good job here. So I can't complain with that portrait right there. So next shot is a macro shot. And this one is like a pink flower, right? It has a pink flower right here. You can see uh, I did a macro shot on both. It's a little bit blurry on both of them. Actually, it is a little bit more clear on the X50. So I, I, I really like how clear the X50's macro um, camera comes out it comes out really clear um, but you know it was blurry on both of these let me switch the photo and you can see it's a it's blurry on both of these for the macro camera as well for that red that that pink flower let's switch the shot right now to this is a picture of like a sky so you can see right here we're looking at both and um, you can kind of see the details on the grass blades on the on the front foreground of the X50 there's a lot of detail on that with the 64 megapixel camera and the A11 has that 16 megapixel camera right so you know it does good for what it is but you could definitely see that that 64 megapixel gives you a little bit more detail but they both come out really clear the sky is a little bit more bluer on the you know on the A11 so let me switch the next picture so this is a wide angle shot right here of a bridge underneath the bridge we're looking at the bridge and it looks like the cute by x50 has a lot more light underneath underneath there and you can also kind of see make out a little bit more details underneath the bridge and you know like around it and like the leaves and stuff like that or on top of the bridge on the a on the a11 it came out pretty good as well so, uh, you know, for the price, you know, it's definitely came out really good compared to the X50. Let's switch to the next one. And this is just the regular view, right? So you, you definitely can see more shadows, more contrast on the X50 with the 64 megapixel versus the, you know, the I think it's a 15 or a 16 on the A11 or something like that. So, you know, they both came out pretty decent. So let's jump into the next one. And that is um, going to be a picture of the, like, this is like a, the uh, video of a bridge so this is the video of the bridge so actually the a11 looks a little bit more smoother when I'm when I'm panning around it does look a little bit more smooth smoother when I'm panning that around so let me know what you guys think but um, let me know which one looks a little bit more clear uh, versus the other one and uh, the next one is basically me walking down a path so I could show you the stability on both of these it's a little bit darker on the X50 when I'm walking down the stairs right here. And on um, on the A11, it's a little bit more, you know, the, the leaves are more green. They're like more of a, a lighter green color. So I just want to throw that out there as well. But they're both, both don't, have, don't both, these don't have like a image stabilization on both of these. So I just want to let you guys know that there's no image stabilization on both of these. So let me just switch to the next one. And this is gonna be a Japanese tree that I saw. This is the wide angle. So you can see this is definitely the wide angle and it looked really good on the Cuba X50. I think that was a really good shot. Looking at the A11, it's still really good, but it's just a little bit darker. I like the color contrast better on the X50 versus the A11. And then let's just jump to the next one. You can see we have a more closer up angle on both. And, um, you know, 
they both did a really good job. I feel like the colors are a little bit better on the A11 and then I feel like on the left, the detail is better on the Cubot X50. So let's jump into the next one and this is a closer up shot and you can see that the colors are different. They're definitely, the colors are definitely different. They're more brighter on the A11, more realistic on the Cubot X50, but more brighter and saturated on the A11. So let's just jump into this selfie shot right here and you can see both look really good. I can't complain, both look really good. This is just a regular shot, it didn't blur out the background, so both did really good. Let, let's see like the next one. And this is actually the rear camera on both. And uh, same deal, it looks more realistic on the Cubot X50, but then the colors look really good on that AI camera on the A11. So I really like the colors on that A11. And then this is like when I was in the Rose Garden, right here you can see that what happened on the X50 is that it showed me the rear ground and then the foreground was blurred out. And then on the Q by, on the A11, it says the the foreground is actually focused in, and the and the, and the rear the the rear ground is actually blurred out. So they did the opposites there. But then this is a picture of the steps, and um, both look really good. I, I actually like how both of these look. To be completely 100% honest with you, the colors. Which one do you prefer? Leave, leave a comment down below. Let me know which one you prefer. They both did a really good job here. I'd say be completely 100% honest with you. And now uh, this is like an angle from looking through the, the actual gazebo area. And then you can see right here, they both did a really good job of capturing depth in the background and stuff like that. So you can see all the way in the background where the arc is, there's a little bit more detail with the Q by X50, but just a really good picture right here. The sky is a little bit bluer on the A11, it looks like. Uh, let's jump into the next. Uh -huh. Took a shot directly at the sky, and you can see right here, uh, both did a pretty pretty decent job of capturing light and you know stuff like that. There's slightly more detail each time on the X50 just because of that 64 megapixel camera, but the colors you can see are just really pleasant and really beautiful on the A11. So you kind of got to give them credit too for the color science that they're using on the A11. Every time it just has a, and this is just the video right here of me walking kind of like slowly. So you could see how the video came out on both of these. So I definitely think that they do come out pretty good for not having image stabilization they both do a pretty decent job if you can walk a little slowly and kind of be, you know, not not too, um, you know, not to make too many harsh movements when you're walking with it. But you can see right here, they both did a pretty decent job. And then this is just a picture of the whole garden while I was inside of it and more realistic on the Q by X50. So the story continues. And then it's a little just, it's just a little bit more contrasty and saturated on the right side where the A11 is. So now this is where I took a picture of like a flower and you can see right here that both have that, that main sensor, they, they use the main sensor. So I use the 64 megapixel on the left and then on the right, you can see the 16 megapixel. And then this is where you get more zoom on the A11. So you get eight times zoom on the A11 and then you get the X50 you get that four times zoom so um, you can see right there you do get better zoom on the A11 so on the fr front facing cameras I just wanted to compare the front facing cameras so you can see what the front facing cameras look like and how the background looks when you're taking advantage of uh, the front facing cameras and also the foreground as well let me know which one did a good job when it came to capturing light and stuff like that and also on the rear, when I was moving these around, uh, just panning around the garden, you can see right here that these are both cameras side by side. The A11 is on the right and on the left, I do have the X50 right there. So let me know which one did a better job right here when we were just panning through the garden. The A11 does look really gorgeous with those colors that it's using. And um, they both just look absolutely phenomenal. So here's another really f long, far distance shot all the way out in the background. You can just see the different colors that they're using 
Um, it, it just got like, maybe it depends on preference. I'm not sure they both look really good here. More realistic, I think, on the I would say the Cubot X50, but really good colors as well on the A11. And the story continues right here in this image. You know, same deal. So they just they just took really good pictures side by side. This one is another angle of the entrance way, as you can see right there. And they, they both were able to take wide angle. Look at the portrait one right here that it took side by side. And you can see that the Cuba X50 did blur out my headphone on the left ear, but it looks like the A11 didn't do that. So that was surprising. And then on this one, I think it did it again. The X50 did blur out the headphone again. So I just wanna, you know, make note of that, but they both do look really good. And um, so this is a, just another picture right here of some benches and the walkway right here to where you can get shade and stuff like that. So I definitely think the, both of these did take pretty decent shots. And then here's another shot of the garden and you can kind of see the sky area and the details in the clouds a little bit more on the Cuba X50. They kind of get washed out on the A11, but they're still a bit present. It's just, they get a little bit washed out. You can kind of see more details on the Cuba X50. And then this is another image of that tree and the clouds and everything. So you can see that the clouds might have a little bit more like detail to them. And also the foreground, you can see the grass has a little bit more texture to it as well. The, the a11 does give you a lot of darks and contrast, but then the details get lost in a little bit. But here's a sunflower, an image of a sunflower, and they both look really good on here. I can't complain whatsoever. So this is just a portrait of a sunflower, and they both look really good on here. So I didn't have any issues with either one of these. And then I just pointed both of these cameras just straight down, just to see which one would take a better shot um, when you point it straight down. And you know, you, you get more detail on the X50, but they both look really good. They both almost look identical, but you know, you do get that little bit more detail on that X50. And, um, and then we're gonna just jump into this picture of this, the, the garden right here. You can see that the, the sticks and, the, and the, um, the lettuce in the front, whatever they're growing right there. And you can see that there's, there's some pretty good detail on, on both you know, and the colors and everything. So they, there's some good detail. Now this is a macro shot of an apple. I think the A11 did a, a, a really good job right here of capturing the apple with the macro camera. The Cubot X50, it kind of blurred it out and you could kind of see more in the background versus in the foreground. And then this one, this the X50 did capture some really good detail on this one for the macro camera. And the A11 did a pre pretty decent job as well. So I could definitely say they did a good job. Now this is another picture of like the, the, the rock that I was zooming in with the macro camera on both of these images. And I could definitely say they both did capture a unique picture on both of these. I like how they did that on both of them. <clears throat> it's more closer up on the A11 and you get more darker colors and then on that left, on the Q by X50, you can see that you get some detail there as well. And some really, it just looks really good on that macro camera. So I'm going to end it right here with the, me walking into the, um, over the bridge and just kind of show you the stability on both of these cameras right here. And let me know which one you think is more stable and which one has better detail as well. I'm just walking really slow and subtle so that I don't try to like disturb the cameras when they're when they're when they're filming and stuff like that and try not to get in too much noise when i'm walking but let me know which one did the better job and let me know which one you prefer overall but i'm sweating right now because it's really hot in here but i'm gonna get right back with you i'm gonna show up in the comment section i'm also gonna show you some love as well down below so hopefully you guys are chilling right now hopefully you guys are well do me a quick, quick favor hit, hit the like button before you get out of here and I'm gonna get right back with you. Also subscribe, get notified for more videos just like this. And I'll check you guys later. So, peace.